Hey guys, welcome to the final for the Desert Games 2015. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit about how it's going to work and the standards. So, as I'm sure you already read, this is a tag team workout. You'll pick one partner to do each workout, and from then on, uh, every time you finish the workout, you'll tag the next part, partner, and they'll start their workout. The first movement is a gymnastics based uh, workout, and it includes handstand or a toes to bar. So we're doing 40 toes to bar for the fire breather and 30 toes to bar for the um, RX division. And so we'll jump on the bar on three, two, one, go. We'll start with toes to bar. What we're looking for is that the feet touch in between the hands. So this is normal standards, normal open standards. Uh, both feet touch between the hands and the feet must be behind the plane of the bar. On the, uh, on, the, on the bottom position. So uh, that's what we're looking for on toes to bar. Uh, the next, any grip is allowed, underhand or overhand grip, as long as uh, your elbows are in extension at the bottom, okay? The next one is handstand push-ups, deficit handstand push-ups. So the deficit, if, uh, the camera wants to follow me here over this way, just so you guys know what it is. For the men, it's a 45 pound high temp plate with a 45 pound uh, competition plate on top. Uh, and then you have a kind of a shorter um, ab mat for the head placement, okay? For the women, it's a 15 pound plate with a 45 pound plate on top with the same ab mat for the head placement. When we're doing these uh, push-ups on the strict handstand push-ups, you have to start from extension. So you can't, roll on your head and start from that position. That is considered a no rep if that's where you're starting from. You'll have to start in, a, in, a, in an extended position and then you can start your handstand push-ups. All we're looking for is the head to touch the, touch the pad. That's it. All right, go ahead. And then that, we also want to make sure both feet are touching the wall and you're staying in extension. The hip or the butt does not touch the wall in that in that handstand push-up and a strict handstand push-up. So no hips against the wall, stay in extension, heels touching the wall at the end of the rep for it to count, okay? For a kipping handstand push-up for the RX division, it's gonna be the same, uh, same setup, but you're allowed to kip, you don't have to, but you're allowed to, butt can't touch the wall, same rules apply, you must finish an extension with the heels against the wall in an extended position. What we'll see a lot of is you coming off the wall before, <laughs> before you actually come uh, into extension with the hands. So we'll see a lot of that. So both heels do not touch the wall, so that's a no rep. Or we'll see one of these things where you start to come off the wall and finish the extension. So uh, make sure your both feet are on the wall at the uh, top of the rep, okay? The next one is, is a handstand walk. It's a 35 foot handstand walk. So uh, there will be a line. You'll start behind the line as long as your feet are behind the line. So if the line is here at the end of this uh, platform, John John can put his toes up to the line and start the rep. Every time you fall, the judge is going to check where the last portion of your body was touching the ground. So where your last hand is, and you'll have to start behind that with your hands. So his hands have to be behind my foot. Start, okay? Instead of the foot at my foot. Alright, so you cannot start. If the judge stands here, you cannot start that way. Okay, you have to start with your hands behind it or we'll bring you back to that position. Okay, once you pass the finish line, uh, you run to the end of the finish line once you pass the 35 feet, and from that point the the, the judge will give the uh, other judge a good time to start, and then your next partner will start the uh, engine portion of the wad, which includes wall balls and rowing. But these wall balls are a little bit different. They're medicine ball over bar. This is a 12 foot height. They're actually set at 11 foot, but for purpose of demonstration, uh, we're using a 12 foot height wall uh, uh, bar. And so one person is gonna have to throw the bar over the, over the ball over the bar and catch it on the other side, all right? And then come back. You can face the bar or you can do it laterally. It's up to you. So John will start. Oops, whoa. 
That's no rep. over, it's still a good rep. As long as the ball goes over, it hits the bar, comes back down, that, uh, on the same side, that's a no rep. You can catch it like John is doing and do it laterally. You can face the bar as you do it. You can let the ball hit the ground and then re-grab and re -grab it, uh, but it's up to you, all right? So you can throw it over, let it hit the ground, back and get it, and pass over. That is a wall, wall ball, medicine ball over the bar. Now, after 15 of those for the fire breathers and 12 for the uh, RX, he'll go into the row. The row will be set. You can, you can check or, or set your damper uh, beforehand. You'll have time to do that before the watt starts. And you can move it anytime during the watt if it needs to be, but only you can. The roller will be set by, reset by your judge every single time you get there. He'll start the pulls. All you gotta do is get 15 calories. Once you hit 15 calories, you come off, go back to the wall balls. If it's your last one, you're going to the finish line. Every time you do 15 calories, there are going to be marks on the floor in competition time. You must move your roller after every 15 calories across the next mark. So John will pick up the roller, and move it across to the next position, jump, uh, go back to do the, uh, the wall balls, and then come back to do the rower. And then the next 15 calories, you'll move it again, okay? So uh, do not pick up the rower, you'll have to roll it, okay? So make sure you grab it from behind and roll it. Don't, don't grab it and run, um, please, uh, whatever you do. So uh, it must be rolled. Uh, across each line. So as long as the entire rower from the back position is behind the marked line on the competition floor, uh, you can move on. All right, they'll be clearly marked. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about the, the second wad or the third wad. That would be snatches for time. That's 30 snatches for time. It's Isabel, uh, 135 uh, and 95 for fire breather and 115 and 75 for the RX, all right? Same, same concept in the, in the snatches beforehand. You can catch in a power, catch in a squat as long as you're extended, feet are together, and then you can advance or that, I mean, that's a good rep. Every seven, I'm sorry, every 10, you'll have to move um, into the next position, walking down the competition line. You can drop it and roll it, or you can carry it on your back, on your, or you can walk it forward. It's up to you on how you want to move it to the next position for the next 10 reps. All right, last one is the, is the thrusters. Once you get past the line, your last partner will do the thrusters. Same, uh, same, same standards as the first workout on the thruster, uh, but you'll be walking the bar every seven reps to complete 21. Um, and that's, that's the final wad. Once that person gets past the, the finish line, the time stop, uh, and we'll choose our winners from that, at that point, after that win that work out. All right. Um, make sure you ask any questions. Get a little sneak peek of the competitor shirts um, for the weekend. We can't wait to have you guys. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. We'll see you there. So there might be a little bit of confusion on how you move through the lane in the final wad. So we wanted to show you an example of what would happen and how it works. So um, on wad number or on the, the rowing workout, you'll have to make sure that as you get up the rower every round, Come back, roll it across the lane divider where the rower is completely behind the line. Back to the wall balls or the ball over bars, back on your second round, finish with the rower, move it, and then pass the final one for your final round. With the barbell, it's very similar. Uh, you'll have the barbell working through the reps, Once you're done with your last rep, you can walk it through. As long as you're past the line, you can start. You can walk it through, you can roll it through, but as long as you're completely past the line, both you and your teammate, uh, if you're doing scaled, that is, but if you're, if you're doing it individually, as long as you're completely past the line, you can start the workout. Once you've gone to the third one, for thrusters, it would be seven, so I'd do seven, 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 and now run past into the finish line um, and meet my teammates there. 
and that will stop the time if it's thrusters. That's to hopefully takes care of a little bit of confusion on how you move forward and how the lanes will be divided.